on the Friday evening, OpenAI released Swarm, which is their lightweight multi-agent orchestration framework. It's their take on how to build multi-agent systems using OpenAI models. And I must say their implementation is extremely clean without any abstractions compared to some of the other uh, multi-agent frameworks that we have seen. The closest I have seen uh, to something like this is going to be Transformers Agents 2.0, which is a multi-agent framework from Hugging Face, but uh, I think it's not being used enough. Now, uh, keep in mind, it's not an official uh, product from OpenAI. It's just their take on how you can build multi-agent systems. And that's why they are not going to be reviewing PRs and issues, but this package is released under MIT license. And there are two main concepts which they are trying to highlight. One is handoff and the other one is routines. Think of routines as agents and handoff is basically transferring ex execution from one agent to another agent. There is a detailed blog post orchestrating agents, routines and hands off, which basically explains how uh, Swarm was created. And I highly recommend uh, everyone to go through this uh, blog post. It explains the whole concept in a lot more details. Now, in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the concepts. Uh, I'll also show you a few code examples of how you can set this up. But in a later video, we're going to have a more detailed deep dive. And I also really like their definition of agents because I think people overcomplicate the concept of agents. Now, according to OpenAI, an agent simply encapsulates a set of instructions with a set of functions. So basically, it's an LLM with a system prompt that has access to a set of functions that it can use to execute some user instructions. Now, how do you use this? It's dead simple. So there are two concepts. You will first need to import swarms, which is the main orchestration framework, and then agent. As I said, agent has two parts. One is system instructions, and then a set of instructions that it can execute. Now, you can define an agent like this. So you provide agent name or persona, then the system instruction along with the functions that it can use. So in this case, there is only one function, which is transfer to agent B. Then we have another agent, which is agent B. In this case, we only provide a system instruction. Now you execute this exactly the same way you would do a chart completion API endpoint. But then whenever we call agent A, then agent A can use this transfer to agent B function, which is essentially function calling to transfer control or handoff control to agent B. And you only need to understand these two co concepts. The concept of routines, routines is basically your agent. And the second is that you can transfer uh, control to another agent just using a function call. And that is going to be your handoff. And the focus for, of the swarm is agent coordination and execution in a highly controllable and easily testable way. And if you think about the way they have designed their multi-agent framework system, it's basically a state machine with some conditionals. And then there are just two abstractions in this whole framework. As we discussed, one is agents and the other one is for handoffs. And as you can see, it's not an official OpenAI product by just looking at uh, spelling mistakes in this uh, GitHub repo. Now, why build this multi-agent framework? So Swarm is lightweight, scalable, and highly customizable by design. And since it's a state machine, you can really customize it the way you want. Now, it's very different from the assistance API. That is a hosted solution from OpenAI. But here, it's optimal for developers who want full transparency and find gain control over contact steps and tool calls. And this will run on the client side, much like the chart completion API. Now, unlike some of the other uh, multi-agent frameworks, this is not a full-fledged solution. There is no memory. If you want to add memory, you'll have to implement it your own way. But the idea is basically you have triage assistant or a triage, a triage agent, 
and then depending on the solution that you want to implement you can have multiple agents each of these agents can have multiple different tools but each of the agent is doing one specific task and depending on your need you just transfer the control to that specific agent the repo provides a lot more details which i'm going to cover in a separate video now the way it's set up it's very similar to a simple function calling so here's an example of how function calling works for different llms when the user query comes in an llm has access to a set of different tools then depending on the user query the llm can determine or decide which tool to use now in this case instead of tools or function it can be another agent so let's say your user query comes in and it needs to call another agent it can just pick this from a list of tool calls or function calls but that function call is going to transfer execution to another agent and then the you get response from that agent and this whole loop continues in order to understand this uh, they have provided a few examples in the repo we are going to specifically look at this example of us uh, setting up basic triage to hand off uh, to the right agent so this uh, accepts a user input and chooses whether to respond directly or triage uh, request to sales or uh, refund agents so here is uh, how they have implemented this whole system and probably uh, close to i would say like 30 35 lines of code if you remove all the spaces there are three different agents one is the triage agent which determines which agent is best suited to handle users request and transfer the conversation to that agent so this is basically the master agent that receives a user input then there is another agent which is a sales agent so be super enthusiastic about selling bees and then there is a third agent which is your refund agent which help the user with a refund if the reason is uh, that it was too expensive offer the user uh, some sort of discount right now this is the only agent that has access to two different functions directly one is process refund and the second one is apply discount and you can see um, here are those two functions that the refund agent has access to but since we want to have a continuous conversation between the user and the triage agent so there are two or three different other functions one is transfer back to triage agent so this is a function that we're going to make available to all of the to the sales agent and the refund agent because at some point they'll have to transfer control back to the triage agent then there's another function transfer to sales and transfer to refund now the way it's set up is that the triage agent initially did not include any functions but here we are added, adding these two functions so depending on the nature of the conversation it will either transfer the control or hand off the control to sales agent or a refund agent now for the sales agent it needs to transfer controls back to the triage agent at some point so we append this function so essentially it's going to have access to a single function and that is going to be how do you transfer control to the triage agent now the refund agent already has two functions but we also append uh, this transfer back to triage agent as another possible function and the main code looks something like this so there is a run demo loop which is basically an infinite while loop that is receiving input from the user and then having a conversation with the triage agent it's a very well thought out approach you can create a state machine and you can define the points at which you will need to transfer control to another or sub state machine and basically you can implement that in the code these llms are now smart enough to decide when to transfer control to another sub agent and i personally think of this as an extension of the function calling or tool user usage that most of us are already familiar with but in this case instead of the tools now you're going to be transferring control to another agent and that agent is going to have it, its own set of tools that it can use and if you want to understand how this whole thing is built they have this highly detailed uh, blog post on it you can use this blog post to create your own frameworks you don't even have to use swarm if you don't need to 
And it's uh, great to see that uh, OpenAI is open sourcing uh, some of their research or at least design patterns, even though if the models are not open source. I'll probably create more detailed videos once I get to play with the framework, but it looks very interesting. I hope they will continue building or at least adding to this, but let's see where this takes us. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.